Alrighty, in this video we are going to be talking about models and like I said in the previous video, a model is a simple way to get data from our database so that way we can use it in our application. So let's go ahead and create a new model for our customer and then we're going to add a database table and a little bit of data. And typically you do not do this. We're going to cover migrations in a future video but for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to manually add some data to the database. But you'll see that later on down the road, you, don't, you shouldn't do it this way. You should actually do that with migrations. But let's go ahead and just make things simple just so you can understand how everything works. So let's create a model first. And I'm going to use our handy dandy artisan tool. So I'll say PHP artisan make model customer. And we see that the model already exists, so I must have created this in the Artisan video. So let's go ahead and open up app, and we have customer.php right here. So we need to create a new table called customers in our database, and then the model will already know that the customer model links to the customers table. So let's go ahead and just open up our database tool, and I am using table plus. You may want to use SQL Pro or any other SQL client. So I'm gonna start things off by creating a new database. And I'm going to call this Laravel 7. Okay. And then I'm going to jump into that database and I'm going to create a new table. And I will call this table customers and it's going to be a very simple table. I'm just gonna have an ID and then I'm going to have a name. And the data type for this is just going to be, I will say, a varchar 255. So I can go ahead and save that. And now we have an ID and we have a name. So nothing too special. Let's go here and add some rows to our database. So I'm going to say that we have two customers. And the first customer's name is Tony. That guy's got a cool name. And then the next customer is John. OK. Now jumping back over to our application, we actually need to link our application to this specific database. And to do that, we edit this inside of our .env, and our .env file is what stores a lot of the environment configs for our application. So you can see here that we have the app name, Laravel, we have app debug, whether that's true or false, and we also have our app URL. So I'm gonna go ahead and change some of these values, just so it makes more sense for our application. So app name, I'll just call this application. I don't know if that makes much more of a difference. Um, but then our URL is going to be application.test. And then here is where we actually add our database stuff. So the database name by default is saying that it's Laravel. But in our case, I created a database called Laravel 7. And I'm just going to save that. Now I'm going to go to my routes web.php. And let's say that I want to get the first customer from the database. So I'm just going to create a simple route closure and call this route first. And inside of this function, check out how cool this is. I'm just going to say app slash customer find with an ID of one. And I want to store this in a customer variable. And now how about I just echo out the customer name? Okay, so we do that. And we go to our application.test slash first, you can see here that we get the first name of our customer. So how cool is that that we just created a table, we added a little bit of data, and then we were able to just connect to that data by calling app customer find one. And this is the power of Eloquent. And you can check out the Eloquent documentation in Laravel. It's basically a way to get data or retrieve data from the database, which is referred to as Eloquent. And behind the scenes, there's a lot of SQL happening. Uh, probably not in this specific case. We're probably just doing a select star from users where ID equals one. But you'll see that down the road, we can do some really complex queries in a few lines of code using Eloquent. And every time we create a new model, we then have all of these Eloquent helpers that we can use, such as this find method. So let me show you a few more things. 
just in case some of this doesn't seem super clear. So if we go back to our app folder and we have our customer model right here, you can actually see that this extends model. And if you look at where that model is coming from, it's coming from a library at Illuminate database eloquent model. So when I said that we were actually using eloquent to fetch some data from the database, we are using the eloquent model every time we create a new model for our application. Now, I also want to show you a quick gotcha that you might run into. Let's say that we named this table just customer as opposed to customers. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this table and say that I created another table called customer with an ID and a name. And we want to just store the same data inside of here. So we want to store two customers with Tony and John. Okay, so if we save this, we go back here and reload, we're going to see that we get base table or view not found Laravel 7 dot customers. So this is actually looking still for the customers table. And that is because back in our customer model, once we create the model, it is looking for a plural version of that model name. So customer, it's actually looking for customers in the database. So to solve that, we can actually create a new protected variable called table and give it the value of the table name that we want our model to refer to our database to fetch the data. So sure enough, if I were to save that and we reload, now you can see that it functions just like it did before. So I'm going to go back here and kind of just undo what I did because I want the table name to be customers instead of customer. And I went ahead and just sped that up so you didn't have to watch me do that again. Okay, so let's go back to our application. So I showed you that from this route, we can actually call the customer or the first customer with an ID of one and then print out their name right here. So let's kind of go through a whole scenario where we hit our customer controller and then we get all of our customers from the database and then we list them out inside of our view. So if we go to the home page, we're going to refer to the customer controller and the index method. So let's open up that customer controller. And I think what I will want to do is get all the customers and store that inside of a variable called customers. So I'm going to say customers app slash customer. And I can use the function all to retrieve all the customers from the database. So again, you'll want to check out the laravel.com slash docs. And you'll want to check out eloquent and you'll see that they have information about relationships. Actually, that's not what we want there. Uh, so eloquent getting started. Yeah, this is where you'll want to go to and you'll want to learn all about these uh, get methods, uh, the where method. And then, like I said, we are going to use the all method right here. So make sure to check out the documentation. It, it's a pretty easy read and you kind of just learn a lot by going through the documentation. Okay, so jumping back over to our code, we need to get all the customers, and then we're going to pass them to our view. So instead of num, we're going to pass customers. And I want to show you, instead of just referring to this as a slash app slash customer, if we were to use this in the namespaces up here, so we could say use app slash customer, then our code will look a little bit nicer, and we can just say customers equals customer all. Okay, so now that we've saved that, we can go into our resources, views, welcome, and I'll just say, here are your customers. And then we want to list them out inside of an unordered list. So I'm going to say for each customers as customer and then I want to print out the name of each customer in a list item. 
So I'm going to say customer name. And let's go ahead and test this out. So now if we go back to our home page, we're going to get base table or view not found, Laravel 7.customer. So you can see that I still have that protected variable specifying that our customer model is looking at a table called customer as opposed to customers. So I need to go back to our app customer and remove that protected variable. If I go back here and I reload, you can now see that we get here your customers and it prints out all of our customers right here on the screen. So that there is the basics of models in Laravel. It makes it super easy for fetching data from our database, but that is it for now. I just wanted to show you the very basics of creating a model and then referring to the database and then getting data from the database. Hey, thanks for checking out this video series on Laravel 7 basics. I just wanted to say thanks for watching this series. And I also wanted to ask you to give me a follow on Twitter at T-N-Y-L-E-A. I also wanted to take just a second and let you know about one of my courses that I created called SAS Adventure. And you can visit it at sasadventure.io. And this is a 21 day program that will teach you how to create your own software as a service using the Laravel framework. So if you want to support me, go ahead and uh, check out my course at sasadventure.io and I will see you in the next video.